right guys, it's time to do this again. Worked so well the first time, why not have another video? And this video is going to be your review of 16.1 through 16.6, which is solving quadratic equations. Everything that I talk about is going to be on the quiz tomorrow, so don't be afraid to pause it, don't be afraid to watch this thing twice. Just be ready for me to talk fast, but I will be saying everything that needs to be said. So let's go ahead and begin. First thing you need to remember about solving quadratic equations is we're trying to figure out the value for x. The ways you can do that is you can isolate x all by itself, or you could factor the polynomial, which we have been doing a little more frequently. This is what we did a couple of days ago. General things that you need to keep in mind from these lessons, when you take the square root of a number, you get both a positive and negative result. That would be like if we square root the number 25, the answer is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. However, you can take the square root of 25 and also get an answer of negative 5. And the reason for that is because negative 5 times a negative 5 is also equal to 25, because a negative times a negative is a positive. In any case, whenever you take the square root of a number, you are getting both a positive and negative answer. That is a main idea from the section of quadratics that you need to take away, a positive and negative result. Lastly, when solving a quadratic equation, you will get two solutions. And this is true because every quadratic equation has a term that says x squared. When you have a term that says x squared, x to the second power, that is giving you an indication that you are going to be getting two solutions. There's another well, you want to isolate x in this situation. And the reason why you want to do that is you do not have a term that says x squared, so you don't really want to factor. This is an x to the first power. Now, yes, this does say x plus 5 squared, but there's a faster way of undoing this than if we were to use FOIL. We don't want FOIL in this case. That would take too long. You want to just use inverse operations. So the first inverse operation that we would want to do is move the 100 to the other side of the equation. You would want to know to do this because in order to get at the x, you have to take the, the term that is farthest away from x and undo that first. That's a good general rule to play by. The 100 is being separated by subtraction. That is letting you know that this is a separate term. So we have to move it to the other side of the equation. The way you would do that is just do the opposite. The 100 is positive, so you would subtract 100 from both sides. The negative sign in front of the parentheses stays with it. It does that because this is really a negative 1 multiplying the parentheses. 64 minus 100 is negative 36. You want to keep getting x alone by continually doing inverse operations. The next outermost thing happening to the x is the negative sign right here, multiplying it. You would divide both sides by negative 1 because that negative sign represents a negative 1 that is multiplying the entire set of parentheses. When you divide by negative 1 on both sides, that cancels out. You are left with x plus 5 squared equals negative 36 divided by negative 1 is 36. You're almost done. In fact, you can even start to see what answer might develop. If you had a 1 here, 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 squared is 36 if you know your perfect squares. But here is how you would prove this answer. The next outermost thing happening here is the square. And in order to undo that, you want to do the inverse operation, which is to take the square root. The opposite of squaring something is taking its square root. That is how you get the original expression back. Whenever you take the square root of one side, it is very important to remember to take the square root of the other side. And when you square root x plus 5 squared, you are undoing the 2 that is right there. So you are left with an x plus 5. But on the other side of the equation, you are now going to get two situations. Either the square root of 36 is positive 6, or it is negative 6. And because you have two possible options there, you need to address two possible equations x plus 5 equals positive 6, or x plus 5 equals negative 6. The way you finish the problem is to continue doing the inverse operations. Minus 5 from both sides. The 5's go away. 6 minus 5 is 1. You have one of your answers. 
5 minus 5 again gives you 0. You are left with x equals negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. That is your second answer. You get two answers, again, because you have the square root of 36, which could have been both positive or negative 6. If you plug these values into the original expression, they are both going to give you 64. These problems you would want to factor because you have the x squared term. Everything is set up so that you already have a trinomial. That is how you know you want to factor when you have trinomials. I will do this one in the logical method. You know that because you have a trinomial here, you are going to be left with two binomials as the factors when you have your final answer. You also know that because this term says x squared, when you foiled this back together, these terms had to have been x and x. There's no other way that you could multiply two variables that are both x to get x squared. It has to be an x and an x. The next thing you do is you ask yourself the question. The question is, what factors of 24 can you add or subtract to get the value of b, which is 11 in this case? So what factors of 24 can you add or subtract to make 11? And since 3 times 8 is 24, and since 3 plus 8 is 11, well, those are the two numbers that we want, 3 and an 8. So you're going to take your 3 and you're going to take your 8 and put them there because it doesn't matter where they go. The way you figure out the plus or minus sign is you look at the 11 and you look at its sign. It says positive. The only way that you can take a 3 and an 8 and combine them to make a positive 11 is if both 3 and 8 were positive. This is not your final answer. This would have been the answer in the previous chapter. But since we are now figuring out how to solve for x, we have to figure out the x values. Well, that's very easy to do because you already have the equation set equal to 0. Remember, anything that is multiplied by 0 is 0. So if you can just figure out what x value makes this binomial become 0, well then 0 times whatever this is, is going to be 0. And that's what you're trying to get. Just like over here, you want to get the same thing on both sides so that the equation is balanced. You want to take that same approach over here. There we go. In any case, what makes 3, or what makes x plus 3 equal 0? Well you can take that binomial and set it equal to 0 to prove it to yourself. You take 3 and you subtract it, the x comes down, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Double check your answer. If you plug in negative 3 and you are adding 3 to it, well, those are opposites. And whenever you add two numbers together that are opposites, it's going to equal 0. So you know that you are correct because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. That is one of your final answers. The other final answer, you take the exact same approach. x plus 8 equals 0. Do the inverse operation, minus 8 from both sides. 0 minus 8 is negative 8. Negative 8 is your other answer, and now you have both of those binomials. Or both of those x answers. Next problem. This is an example where you would want to use the air conditioning method. That is because you do not have a coefficient that is not 1. The coefficient here is 1. And because of that, it was very easy to logically conclude that both of these had to be x values. But over here, the coefficient on x squared is a 3. That's not 1. You have to use the air conditioning method, the AC method. The other thing you have to be aware of in this problem is that we do not have the initial setup that we like. It should be set equal to zero, and it is not right now. We have to do inverse operations. Minus 6x from both sides, because that says po a positive 6x. Negative 4x minus 6x is negative 10x. 
and that equals negative 3. Then add 3 to both sides. Because there are no like terms over here, you cannot add the 3 to either this or this. So that means you just write down, whoops, you write down plus 3 without anything happening to it. It's just part of the trinomial now. And that's what you have. A trinomial over here that we could factor. You now have another trinomial that you can now factor. Again, because we have a coefficient on x squared that is not 1, we want to use the air conditioning method. And the air conditioning method starts with you multiplying a times c. Remember, the a and c that I'm talking about is coming from this. a times c. 3 times 3. That is going to give us 9. You take your 9 and you ask yourself the question. What factors of this number can you add or subtract to make this number? What factors of 9 can you add or subtract to make 10? That would be 1 and 9. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 plus 9 is 10. The next thing you do is you now rewrite the trinomial. The 3x squared is unchanged. Now for the rewrite, though. It says negative 10x. You need to take 1 and 9 and use them, positive or negative, to make a negative 10. The only way you can make a negative 10 with a 1 and a 9 is if the 1 were negative and the 9 were also negative. And keep in mind, the variable x is with the 10, so it has to stay with the 1 and the 9 when you do this. Negative 1 minus 9 is going to give you negative 10. So this is your negative 10x. You don't subtract these back together. This is just to prove where they came from. Halfway there. The next step is to do the grouping step, where you group the first and last two sets of binomials. Because the minus sign went with the 9, you want to put a plus sign there. Next, factor out your GCFs. This is called grouping, by the way. Factor out your GCFs. We have a 3 and a 1. There's no GCF there. An x squared and an x, you can factor out a single x. We did not do anything to the 3, so it states. The x squared, we factored out an x. You're only left with 1x. Right here, there was a single x that we took from negative 1. So that means the negative 1 is now by itself. This x got factored out. Over here, negative 9 and 3, a GCF of negative 3 can be taken out. Again, remember, because the leading term was negative, you want your GCF to also be negative. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3. We didn't do anything to the x's. Positive 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. We got the same binomial. That means we are probably on our track to getting the right answer. The way you get the final answer is you now take the GCFs and you make those into one of the binomials. Then you take the other binomials that you had as a pair and those make the other GCF or the other binomial. Now you have your two binomials that are equal to zero when they're multiplied. This is the factored form of this. Remember, though, we're not done yet. This is the situation where you now have to figure out what x value makes this binomial equal to zero. Well, that's very easy in this case. It says x minus 3. If x were positive 3, which is the opposite, again, the idea that I was talking about over here, 3 minus 3 is 0. So that means x equals 3 is one of the solutions. 3 minus 3 gives you a 0. 0 times anything is 0. The other one, it is not as obvious because x has a coefficient. It's not clear that the answer is actually going to be 1 third. But here's how you prove it. Take 3x minus 1 and set it equal to 0. 
you're trying to figure out what x value makes this become 0. Add 1 to both sides. The 1's cancel out. The 3x comes down, and 0 plus 1 is 1. Last step, divide both sides by 3. The 3's cancel out. 1 over 3. These are both of your factors, or these are both of your x values that are the solutions to the quadratic equation, and you are done. All right, so the last problem we are going to do is the word problem that we talked about on the first day that we learned about this stuff, and is a very common problem that you're going to see on the end of course exam. They love giving you the situation. So watch this closely, learn from this. This situation comes up a lot when you are dealing with quadratics and word problems. The height of a flare fired from the deck of a ship in distress can be modeled by this equation right here where h is the height of the flare above water in feet, and t is the time in seconds. Find the number of seconds that it takes the flare to hit the water. In other words, for the flare to hit the ground level, the lowest point, otherwise known as zero. The way a flare travels is you shoot it off from the ground, and then it goes up, and then it comes down. You think of the ground as being equal to zero and you are trying to figure out what are the x values that make the flare be on the ground. Well, this equation models the flare's path. It says the height can be modeled by this equation. So you take this equation, the first thing to notice is that all of these numbers are even. You can take out a GCF. In fact, because the 16 is negative, you want to take out a negative GCF. Now, you can divide out 2. And if you did that, you would have even numbers. You would divide 2 again, and you would do it a third time. I'm going to save you the trouble and let you know that you can actually take a negative 16 out of this entire thing. Negative 16 divided by negative 16 is 1. T squared is by itself. 80 divided by negative 16 is negative 5. So you get negative 5t. Lastly, 96 divided by negative 16 is negative 6. Proceed in the normal way. This equals 0. Well, the only part of this that you are trying to figure out is the trinomial that you have right here. Figure out what makes this 0, and 0 times negative 16 is 0. Well, I'm going to set up two binomials because that says t squared. It has a coefficient of 1. That means you can assume that that's a t and that's a t. You have a 6. You have to ask yourself the question, what factors of 6 can add or subtract to make 5? The problem with that is that there are two options. 1 times 6 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 plus 3 is also 5. So how do you know which one to pick? You don't until you pick one of them and you check. Because I already know the final answer, I'm just going to pick the right numbers. You would pick one of them in general, try it. If it doesn't work when you foil it back together, then you know it is the other numbers that you should have picked. We have a 5. Whoops. We have a 6, we have a 1, it is a negative 5, so that means the 6 has to be negative and the 1 has to be positive because negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So to answer the question, what values of time, how much time is it going to take before the height of the flare is 0? Well. Because that says plus 1, you know that t has to be negative 1 because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So one of the time values is negative 1. The other time value has to be positive 6 because positive 6 minus 6 also equals 0. So you can't have two moments in time when the flare is on the ground. I mean, you're standing up and you're shooting the flare and then it goes up and then it comes down. It doesn't make sense for this value of time to be negative. You can't have negative time. That is time travel that has not yet been invented. That means time has to be six. Six seconds from when you shoot the flare for it to go up 
and calm down and hit the ground. All right, the last thing I'm going to put on this video is an opportunity to practice what we just did. What you should do right now is pause the video, work these out, and then resume it. And I'm going to work these out really quickly. I don't have a lot of time. Just follow along with the work the best that you can and try to learn from it. So the quadratic formula says negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Those equal your x values. The x values that are going to be your zeros of the function. I'll give a shout out to Alyssa who called me out on how I spelled all those wrong. Whatever. Blame autocorrect. So the formula says, again, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, that equals x. You should write this down, pause this if you need to write this down. I'm going to be shrinking it. Negative b, it already says negative 12. So you're taking the negative of negative 12 plus or minus the square root negative 12 squared minus 4 there's always a 4 there, and then times a, a in this case is 1. I didn't specify that from before. a is 1, b is negative 12, c is 11. a is 1, c is 11. All of that is over 2 times a, which is 1. Start simplifying. That's a boom boom. It's positive 12, plus or minus. Negative 12 to the second power is positive 144. Be careful when evaluating this. That is a negative 4 times a positive 1 times an 11. So you know right now that because that is negative and those are positive, you are going to have a negative answer. And then 4 times 11 is 44. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus. 144 minus 44 is going to leave you with 100. And when you square root 100, you are going to be left with a 10. So you now have 12 plus or minus 10 over 2, separated into two equations. 12 plus 10 over 2 and 12 minus 10 over 2. 12 plus 10 is 22. 22 over 2 is 11. 12 minus 10 is positive 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. These are your solutions for x. And then the way you could write out your binomials, remember it's the opposites. x minus 11 and x minus 1. When you put a positive 11 here, 11 minus 11 is 0. That's why your answer is positive 11. You can always check your answer, too, by foiling it back together. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Negative 11 times x is negative 11x. And negative 11 times negative 1 is positive 11. These are like terms. Combine them together. x squared minus 12x plus 11 equals 0. It is the exact same thing that you saw from above. So... That is how you do pretty much everything in chapter 16. The quiz is tomorrow. Study up. Good luck.